This week on the iRacing Downshift, Greg has an accident. Want to know the, the <laughs> amount of diesel fumes in my basement right now? Kevin talks about his favorite track. I'm a Lime Rock Classic kind of guy. Rip up I that hill, to... launch the car, and hope you land straight. And Chris is a made man. Like I always have a guy, and they're not wrong. This is why Emily thinks that I'm in the mob. All that, plus special guest Tony Gardner, and more. So strap in. Welcome to the iRacing Downshift. I'm your host, Greg West. I'm back with the boys, Kevin, Bobbitt, and Chris Leone. Guess what? We've got a great show for you. As usual, episode 50, eh, something. So many of them now, I can't even count, but uh, very excited to be you here. doing that in Roman numerals. That would make it seem more like fancy, don't you think? <laughs> well, I mean, Cisco's here, and he's going to do the intro video. <laughs> Cisco, don't, don't do that. <laughs> Trying to figure out what's higher, our episode count or my uh, incident points in a typical ES2 race. A close incident race. Ooh, that's that's a incident points. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> it's a close race now. Uh, what have you boys been up to? Kevin, it's almost golf season. It's almost golf season. It's basketball it's season, though, right now. So, you know, March Madness has started or is starting. Uh, Celtics are on a roll. Uh, I'm enjoying basketball. So got my have you filled out a bracket? There. I haven't filled out a bracket. I got a couple of days. I, you know, I don't know. Thursday. I, 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 I never do well on those, so I might just sit back and enjoy the games instead. I don't know. But yeah, but I'm getting ready for golf. Um, by getting ready, it means um, not really doing anything, but anticipating it. <laughs> I'm not swinging or anything, but I'm I'm ready to play. How yeah, about well, you? Uh, well, you know, PGA 2K23 was on the Steam sale. Pick that up. And, uh, and let me tell you what, that game might be harder than actual golf. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Putting is quite challenging. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I'm terrible at it, but it's fun. Um, yeah. What about you, Leone? What's new? How are the rats? Uh, I mean, I've I have been misusing the wet tires from the uh, build that we're going to get into in a couple of minutes um, by making everything work off-road. We noticed. Yeah, yeah, that's that's not really news, is it? No, no, that's standard operating procedure. For yeah, me, no, standard. I don't know. Other than that, playing in the dirt, you know, got my got my off road stuff that I go off and do. Um, you know, we just wrapped up the Mint Four Hundred. That was a blast. Uh, other than that, digging some old guitars out of the closet and making sure everything still works. It's uh, yeah, okay. So Leone's in charge of the intro. Maybe you could do a new intro for us, right? No, no, I'm a rhythm player. I'm not a lead player, but I know a guy. It's fine. Um, Chris right. knows his space. I, I, know, I know a guy. Everybody, everybody always talks to me like I'm, like I'm from How I Met Your Mother. Like I'm Barney. Like I always have a guy, and they're not wrong. Uh, this is why Emily thinks that I'm in the mob. I'm not, but. Okay. That's what somebody in the mob would say. That's what but somebody anyway. in the mob would say. All right. All right. So, Greg, Greg, I have a burning question for you, Greg. Oh, a burning question? I a burning see. question. <laughs> yeah. How's the temperature in your in your house today? It's warming up. It is warming well, well, up. Well, what happened? Do tell. I'm an irresponsible adult and ran out of heating <laughs> oil overnight and uh, had to go and, and I had to learn some homeowner uh uh At least it's been a mild winter in New Hampshire. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. So I may or may not. <laughs> smell like diesel fuel at the moment but <laughs> no smoking in greg's house today because <laughs> it hasn't burst into flames yet but it also just stopped making noise so i don't know what that means anyway let's get into the i racing uh, season two build i don't know if anybody has heard anything about it but we literally made it rain that's the best i got that's the reference that's all, all right, right. That's it. So rain is here. So moving on. That's, that's, that's the build. Yeah. That's yeah. the build. All right. Good show. Uh, actually, before we get into that, we also we have a great guest today. Yeah, Tony we probably Gardner. should tease the, tease the guest, yeah. right? President and CFO of iRacing, Tony Gardner, friend of the show, gracing us with his presence. We're going to talk about everything under the iRacing umbrella. I mean, everything. Uh, you'll want to stay tuned to that. And you're probably going to want to record that part because, you know, Tony Loose Lips Gardner is a thing. You never <laughs> know what he's going to say. <laughs> just go with the bleep button ready to go. So. go. You probably should bleep what I just said. But <laughs> anyway, let's get into the build. Season two build. Uh, completely new iRacing advanced weather system. Uh, yes, it rains. It does all kinds of good stuff. We, the, the dynamicism of the sim has a, a That's drastically a word. improved. Dynamicism. You're welcome. You're wow. welcome. Raising the quarter. level. That, that was a good one. Raising the level of the discussion, Kevin. All right. All this right. is the guy that was looking up the source the other day and couldn't you couldn't spell the source in the web browser. 
You also couldn't remember your name when we tried to record the intro here, but I, I, I wasn't supposed to bring that up. Do you want to know the, the <laughs> amount of diesel fumes in my basement right now? I mean, I should not be leading this show right now. I feel I like it's I am a referee shirt for the two of you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but let's talk about rain. Let's talk about rain. I think we got uh, 15 series that it can possibly rain in, and boy, did it rain in IMSA this week. That's for sure. We... we uh, we kicked it off right, IMSA at Suzuka, and there was a, a heavy rainstorm. I, I really enjoyed watching some of that. Uh, but yeah, a, a ton of cars that can be that are rain enabled. All the IMSA cars, so you, all the four GTPs, the LMP2, uh, the IMSA GT3s with the rest of the GT3s, the Ford and the McLaren coming very soon. Ray FF1600, Toyota GR86, F4, and the brand new Super Formula Lights. And that's the singular and the plural, by the way. Super Formula Lights. Always. Lights. Not Got light. It. Lights. Lights. Good to know. Yeah. Yeah. I'm here for you. <laughs> Director of marketing, things you need to know. This has been a very educational podcast for me. So there's too many diesel fumes in my basement. <laughs> but yeah, just super fun. If you haven't got out there, go to test session, make it rain, go drive around. Uh, grab the GR86 and just go have a ball. That's the, me, that car is super fun in the rain. Uh, it is. Or, or whatever you, whatever weather you choose, right? I mean, that's probably the coolest part. It's not just rain. It, it's full weather. So it can be dry. It can be wet. It can be drying. You know, all that stuff. It, it, if you haven't played with it, you have to. It's so fun. What's your track, Kevin? Where do, where do you go? You're, okay, you're going to try something for the first time, a car. Where, where on the sim do you go? Well, uh... Often it's Lime Rock because that's my home track. I grew up going there. Uh, Watkins Glen would be my my other go to. So between those two, um, that that's where I go for for any road road going you know road course sort of things. What I'm a you? long I'm a Long Beach guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're braver long, than I am. <laughs> no, I love consequences. I think it's fantastic. I you know if you mess up, you should pay the price. So I, I like when I'm testing a new car or something like that. I like to go to a track that I know so well that that it's not the track that is catching me out it's you know i I feel like i can evaluate the car or the the rain or 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 traction much better if i'm at lime rock because it's just it's just something i i can do you know in in the sleep and and chris you probably just pick anything with dirt and jumps right i mean yeah wild west is usually my installation track for things but that's where i would say the roadside sakuba Sakuba's oh, my. Sakuba's good. All right, there you Which yeah, one thousand. No, yeah. no two thousand. Two thousand plus. It's great. I, I mean, I send Pro Fours to one thousand all the time, but no, two thousand for anything that I'm using properly. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Very cool. <laughs> well, uh, let's let's uh, just quickly gloss over. We got a great interview with Tony that, that takes a, a pretty good chunk of time here, but we do want to touch everything in, uh, on the build. So obvious, obviously, super form the lights. Uh, if you haven't gotten in, into it, uh, go. It's a, a three-cylinder. The sounds on it are fantastic. Uh, the liveries on trading paints are are, are awesome, and uh, we had some some good help uh, developing it. Once again, Max Esterson jumped in, helped us out. He has driven the car in the real world. He also helped us develop the F4 and the uh, the Ray FF1600. He's been quite the workhorse for us on helping develop open wheelers, and I think the, uh, the I think it shows. So. Uh, really happy with the way that car turned out, but just listen to the sounds. The sounds are fantastic. Obviously, the visuals and the, the handling are, are wonderful as well, but the sounds really set it apart. Uh, we also dirt micro sprint, which is multiple cars in one. We got the wing and the winged and the non winged version, and we're actually going to be uh, introducing a lower powered version. Uh, I don't know if it will be out at the, the time of the show, but if not, very soon uh, for the rookie level. Hashtag soon. Hashtag one, soon. Right? Uh, also a ball uh, the, I've, I've driven the, the the prototype lower powered version because i'm terrible on dirt absolutely terrible i'm worse true. than leone on a road course with a controller on dirt <laughs> i want to be clear you're not that bad come on yeah. Just have a little two, credit. i have two wins <laughs> in dirt 305s with a controller when i used to have to travel around with my crappy little laptop all right so fun facts uh let's see what else srx this is cool we had some of the, uh, you know, the diehard community are saying this is the, one of the best oval cars that we've ever built. Uh, and this thing, I mean, let's be honest, it's kind of a boat. Like, you have to really wheel the car, but it's super rewarding 
when you get it right, but don't drive it in deep. Uh, you are you have to be patient with it, roll the center, get get out of the gas a little sooner. Uh, it definitely does not it's like have driving the 87 force. cars, right? I mean, I, I was driving those the other day and I was like, wow, I, yeah, I got to I got I got to back this up a little bit. <laughs> it's like like watching the Cup Boys at Bristol oh, too soon. Uh, that was a great race. That's never too soon to talk about a great race. <laughs> Although I also got to shout out all the people uh, putting their paints on trading paints for the SRX because we've seen some IMSA GTO paints. Oh, on that yes. well, I haven't seen those. I'll have to look yeah. those up. Oh, those they look good. so good. They're really good. They're really good. Uh, the trading paints community, the community of painters at iRacing just, it hats off. I don't have one on, but hats off. That It's amazing the, the work that these people do. Um, all right, let's flip it over to tracks because we had a bunch of those. Well, this was a huge build. Like, I, I don't know if anybody's paying attention or keeping score at home, but this legitimately could be the biggest build as far as content and features that, that I've that I've been around for. I, I, Kevin, you're an OG. I mean, this yeah, is I mean, it, pretty high. It, it's certainly right up there. I mean, dirt when dirt came out, that I also had a lot of content, obviously, because we needed to introduce content and in, in all. But uh, certainly in recent memory. This has been huge um, and incredibly impactful, right? So, you know, what's cool is, you know, the rain impacts, even if you're not interested in any of the new cars or new tracks, right? It's still something that improves the quality of racing and, and the overall experience in iRacing. Absolutely, to steal Chris's line. Uh, so, yeah, talking tracks, <laughs> let's talk Misano. This is uh, one of the uh, the Italian tracks, five layouts. It's going to be great for for all kinds of racing, Pretty open much wheelers, everything. tin tops. Yeah, you like you want to just go there and uh, and and rip around. Uh, and, and this is uh, Greg Hill and the entire art team put on a masterclass this build cycle on on tracks. Like uh, Misano, we also have Porta Mile. Uh, super excited about that. If that's not popular community, you guys are doing it wrong. It's fun. Yeah. Yes. It goes up and down hills, but don't let this track. Did you be just call out our membership? I, I, I did. You, did. you, you put guys him on are notice. wrong. <laughs> it, this is a great track. It is good for slow cars. It is good for fast cars. It is good for all cars. It's even good, probably for Chris's trucks. I'm sure. Yes, too is going to race them at some point. <laughs> probably already has tested. I'm sure. So. But I, mean, was... I did spend a lot of time on Misano Club with the rally cross cars. <laughs> there we go. There, there we it go. is. Point six uh, miles. That is an RX track. It just doesn't have dirt. Hey, fun fact, the uh, Rallycross car has got bigger fuel tanks for this build, so you can really go and goof off a little bit. Maybe at places like the Nürburgring. Just saying. Maybe. Yeah. No, Just, that, well, that's I like it. a little well, hidden hidden release hidden. note in there. Ringmeister? Ring, maybe. maybe. Coming to a Ringmeister maybe. near you. Who knows? But yeah, Misato and Porta Mayo on the roadside. Um you know, even if road racing is not your thing, go on YouTube, check out, you know, some of Alex and Cole's videos that they put up to show them off. I mean, I think anybody from, you know, any of our now five licensed categories on iRacing can appreciate the the amount of work that and the level of detail that went into these tracks. I mean, the, our, hey, our, hey, speaking of video, sorry, totally off track, but that's what we do here on the, yeah. on the Downshift Podcast. But you made me think of it. <laughs> so we just, we, so Greg Hill did a, uh, uh, dev vlog a few weeks ago we just made the video version of it so check that out if you haven't already so if you prefer to watch videos versus listen to reading that sort of thing it's available check it out on our youtube channel yeah check out the youtube channel which if you're watching this you're probably on so unless you're on twitch but you unless know. you're on twitch that's a good point i heard an echo for a moment so i got really distracted or maybe <laughs> it's the diesel it's fumes. the diesel fuel it's, it's definitely the diesel fumes. Diesel, yes. why does kevin look like a dragon i don't even know <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then, uh, if road course racing is not your thing, uh, Millbridge came out, which is home of the dirt micros. It's almost like we planned that. Um, and, and once again, not your, uh, even if it's not your cup of tea, go check out the videos, just like the, the amount of work that went into these tracks and, and how, just the, they're beautiful. They're absolutely beautiful. If it is your cup of tea, go rip around on them. They're an absolute blast. Uh, Millbridge pretty small, uh, but, but good. Good fun entertainment, entertainment, and uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing uh, you know the highlights, uh, the t the next top ten and not top ten video, gonna be pretty good I think. <laughs> um, and while we're on tracks, we also we added four of our existing tracks to the base package. The rookie series have be got, uh, become significantly more diverse with Leidenon, Oshersleben, Snetterton, and Winton uh, becoming part of the base package. So if you didn't own them, you do now. 
congratulations. You're welcome. Um, and that's, that's a win, 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 win. Everybody wins. Win. Everybody right. wins. We add a little more uh, uh, geographic diversity to the base package, and that's always a good thing. Um, yeah, so he's super excited to also not have, when doing rookie schedules, not having to repeat tracks multiple yeah, times. Yeah, great. It, it makes all the options. It makes series options much better for our rookie series. Sure. Yeah, for those of you that do not like Lime Rock chicanes, we can we can probably come up with I'm a uh, Lime Rock classic kind of guy. Uh, to go rip up I that love... hill, launch the car, and hope you land straight. See, I'm in the minority. I like the West Bend chicane. I know. At me in the comments, please go oh, ahead. Oh, man. That's I terrible, think, Greg. No, it changes the entire dynamic of the track. It certainly does. And, and, it, and we'll it leave it at that. Another <laughs> passing zone. Uh, you know, Lime Rock Dega gets a little bit more complicated. You got to use that pedal that's in the middle a little bit. What's that? Hey, uh, the coward pedal, Kevin. <laughs> what do we call it now? <laughs> oh, good times. Um, all right. And then let's go into, we, I touched on it a moment ago. Other, you know, big quality of life improvement. This actually is not on there, but I'm going to mention it. New user experience. This is really cool for new users. If, if you're listening to this podcast, it probably doesn't apply to you, but I think this is really cool. Not so true. Gonna... I've met people yep. who don't have memberships yet who listen to our podcast. Who remember oh. that, right? Well, so. well there you go. Hey, the, the oil company's here. They're filling my tank. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's good news. <laughs> but yeah, so new user experience, uh, you know, iRacing can be a little difficult and a little overwhelming to get started. We can admit that probably not our strong point, but uh, for new users, they will be presented with a dialogue box where you just pick oval or road. And then you just click that and you're immediately put in to a, a, an on-track session uh, where you get to practice a little bit. And then we put you in a short AI race. AI is turned down pretty low and you have a spotter that's going to help you calibrate your controls. They're going to walk you through the just a few basic aspects of iRacing, you know, how to exit the pit safely. Yeah, I was going to say, course. even getting on track can be challenging uh, if you don't know the, the iRacing rules, because they might be different than what you're used to. They're certainly different than any other game. They make sense once you understand them, but to your point, we didn't maybe do a good job explaining them to, uh, to new people on day one, so we're really focused on trying to get people to have a great experience when they join and not get too frustrated. Yep. And that's uh so that's really important. And I, I think it's going to uh, help a lot. Uh, there is a way in the settings uh, menu uh, to uh, actually go through it. If you'd like to uh, go down to, to settings, I'm sure you can navigate to it. I don't have my notes off the top of my head, but it's, it's a lot of fun. I, I do like the oval version street stock at USA for you advanced guys. Uh, the challenge is, is not to complete the new user experience. It's to see if you can lap the field. If you can <laughs> lap the field, you're going to, you're going to have to get after it, but that is an interesting challenge for all skill levels. So uh, it's a, it's a good time. Maybe we should do that for the, and then report back on the next podcast. See if we can do it. Chris. Yeah, actually, no, Chris needs to do new user experience since he didn't get his license up. Chris has to oh, do user yeah. experience. Okay. <laughs> Done. And report back. That's your homework. Back, Chris homework some somebody make a note is it we, we expect a 10 page written report yeah. uh Single spaced wait with me. sources noted properly eight, eight point <laughs> fail at brevity that's impossible <laughs> <laughs> uh so other quality of life improvements so the, the road license split also really important i'm going to call this i'm, I'm going to shout somebody out on staff that i think was instrumental in the design of this brian simpson who is a, a you know one of our I forget his job title off the top of my head. Senior art something. Very senior. Embarrassing that I don't know his title off the top of my head. But is a Formula V fanatic. Did he wins We've this... actually discussed changing the name of that series to the Brian Simpson series. It, 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 uh, it, I don't know if he knows that. But... I don't know if Brian listens to this. But he loves the Formula V. And he's very good at the Formula V. I think he's up to like a 3,000 I rating just off the Formula V. But... If he goes into something maybe he's not as comfortable in, he's he just gets destroyed because his I rating is not really consistent with the, another car. Like if he's he goes not a three thousand I rating in GT3, exactly. For and that is just one of probably thousands of people that are in the exact same boat, and is they don't want to take a chance on losing I rating, and it actually leads to people not racing as much. 
And by splitting a little bit, and I know there's a lot of opinions on the forums on how we did this right or wrong or whatever. Um, but at least it gives you the abilities like, hey, if I'm a GT3, you know, hardcore GT3 driver, but you know what? Me and my buddies on Friday night want to go and go race a, a, an FF1600 or Formula V or go rip around in Formula 4 and, and have fun. You know, that that word. You, you can do so without risking your you know, your, the, the, what you've worked yeah, so really you can, hard for. So you can be remain getting in top split of your whatever it is series that, that's super important to you. Exactly. And no, this is not saying, oh, you can go and just screw around and mess up people's races up. The majority of people come on the service. They want to have a good time, but they want they want to race clean. I mean, there's always going to be exceptions to rules and whatnot. We just want people participating. We want more engagement. We want people to to uh, to do that and uh, get more value out of your subscription, right? So, um, it, it, and it's and it helps the I rating system work the way it was designed, which is really about putting you in a, a competitive split. It's, it, it's not a, not, in my mind, it's not a badge of honor. I mean, it's amazing if you have a ten thousand I rating, but that's not the point of it. The point of it is so that whatever the number is that yours is, is that it's accurate and that you're put into a race with people of similar skill. And this helps us do that a bit more uh, across uh, multiple disciplines. But that that's, a uh, Kevin, that's not all when it comes to quality of life improvements uh, for this build. Uh, one of the things, I don't know how we haven't mentioned it yet, between the major update to the UI and also the, the homepage of iRacing in general. Why don't you tell us about that? Yeah, yeah, well, I'll speak to the, the homepage. So we've done a complete revamp of the homepage of iRacing.com. So check it out if you haven't. I know not all members go there every day because you probably know most of that stuff, but it, but it's the it's kind of the window into iRacing, right? So if you, you hear about iRacing from your buddy or you, you see one of the logos on the NASCAR broadcast on Fox or, or whatever, however you hear about iRacing, do Google. That's where you land. And we, we just want to make it a bit more inviting. Uh, I mean, from a tech, technical standpoint, it's... Uh, it loads, I don't know how many thousands of times faster. <laughs> Our technical guys were were blown away uh, when they were looking at stats. So that that makes it the experience better, uh, the page loading. Um, but it really show tells the story of iRacing briefly, but more completely all on one page. We still you can still dive into things if you really want to know more about I don't know AI or dirt racing or every car that we offer every track that's all available all the, the depth of the website is is still there um but the initial uh landing page uh much more modern clean design and, and hopefully it gets the message points across uh to potential new people to, who will be joining iRacing we're going to continue to iterate on that and and work on the other pages as well but that's a longer term project but super excited to roll that out uh, and hopefully you guys enjoy that well, and those themes also carry over to the UI updates as well. You know, we've gotten a lot of feedback from the community. Uh, the UI has is, is definitely been a work in progress for a, a long time as, as we've shifted away from the classic site uh, for, for technical reasons that, you know, there's, we had to do that. And, uh, but where we, where we are now is, I think, uh, once again, like you said, a much more modern and streamlined approach. Yes, change is different. Uh, it, it is going to, some buttons have moved around a little bit. Uh, but I, I think overall, people are are, are seeing yeah, that, that there's a method to the madness. Yeah, that, and that's that's worth noting. I mean, it, it's obvious, but like if things are in different spots, it doesn't mean they're in the wrong spot. They're just in different spots. So you you may be you have muscle memory of clicking on things for years and years and years. Give it a chance, right? Uh, we, we've spent a lot of time. We didn't just kind of randomly do things. There's been a lot of thought, a lot of a lot of minds behind this. Um, there's some technical reasons to change things as well. Um, but I think once you, you give it a shot and get used to it, you'll find navigation much, much better. Yeah, and I think that, uh, you know, you hit the nail on the head. There's a lot of thought. There's not just one person in the back room saying, oh, hey, let's put this here. We've right. done, there's been, we, we've brought on UI UX experts. We have got brought, they've done some, you know, some some interviews, uh, some customer focus uh, product testing, a lot of back-end work to really define what the the objective is for each task that you're trying to accomplish and trying to streamline it as, as much as possible and you know they'll be they'll continue to be to work uh to work on this uh moving forward as well so um we're excited to see where it goes uh there's still some work to be done but i'm going to tell you what uh i personally enjoy the fact that there's significantly less modals it just is for me it just it just works in in my head a little bit more uh so yeah 
pretty excited about that. On that note, um, Kevin, Chris, what do you say we bring on our guest? Sounds good. All right. Yeah. Once again, friend of the show, president and CFO of iRacing, Tony Godna is going to sit down with Kevin and I. Uh, Kevin's a really integral part of this interview. He really takes the lead in most of it and uh, pretty excited. I think you guys will enjoy the banter back and forth between him and Tony. And without further ado, Tony Godna. All right, Kevin and I are back with friend of the show, multiple time guest. One of our top guests, I think, right? One of our top guests. Uh, if you look at the Spreaker uh, statistics. Very popular, uh, man. <laughs> president and CFO, Tony Gardner, taking time out of this incredibly busy week to uh, to sit down with us. Thanks for coming on, Tony. Well, thanks for having me to, on the pod. Uh, I'm a big fan. I listen to every one of them. Yeah, Tony's Tony likes uh, seems to like coming on the podcast, and we kept saying we were going to bring him on, and then we didn't. And so he just went and did another interview with without us. It just went around us. He has that's right. He doesn't need us. So uh... he's got to get the messaging out there. <laughs> <laughs> thanks that's for right. thanks when for coming on. Though. Me, I, yeah, when somebody invites me, I usually show up. Uh, most of the time, <laughs> just have to invite me. Well, let's get into it. Uh, big last few weeks for iRacing, last few months of iRacing have been huge, uh, but culminating with the release uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, obviously rain was the, the the big item, the big feature development that we finally were able to put out to the membership. And Tony, that has had a, a significant impact on the, the business of iRacing, uh, specifically the membership, right? Yeah, we're really excited about that release and, and proud of it. You know, we worked for years on it. Um, some engineers were on it for years, other people uh, just a few months, but uh, it was a, a huge effort. And uh, and uh, the the reception has been, uh, we, we knew it would be good, but it's been overwhelming how positive the reception to the feature has been. So the, uh, we've really seen a spike in, in growth growth. Uh, uh, customer growth and so it's been really exciting so a lot of people we know it's a lot of people that were members coming back to try it and really enjoying it and uh, it really it really i think demonstrates the iRacing brand you know how realistic and how much we put into it different from other games so um you know where we modeled all the physical elements of rain and uh etc cetera, etc cetera. so it's uh really exciting and uh um and, you know, we've got a little bit of tweaking to do now, but uh, we're really happy how it all went. Yeah, the uh, the reception from the community has been great, and, and the membership numbers have shown it. Uh, this was this week we eclipsed uh, over 250,000 active accounts in iRacing, and I believe, uh, what is that, overnight, last night, eclipsed a million total accounts, right? Yeah, now we're over, you know, we picked up another 5,000, so we're over 255,000 members already. Uh, you know, we just went over 250 over the weekend, and yeah, we we passed uh, 1 million uh, accounts uh, over the history of iRacing. Um, it took us um, nine and a half years. No, it took us it took us 12 and a half years to get the first 500,000 accounts, and then it's taken us three and a half years to get the second 500,000 accounts. So you can see that we're growing a lot more in the last three years. So um, pretty amazing. Yeah, it's nice to see, uh, you know, especially in this niche, uh, you know, to be able to have continued success and really growing, you know, after what we were, you know, thought was the, the COVID boom. And we didn't know on the backside of that whether we would have a dip. And uh, it, it, we were able to accelerate and continue growing after that as a testament to the amount of work that was put in by all of the developers because we, we never rested on our laurels. We just, doubled down on everything, put it back into the product and tried to continually improve the product and even raise the bar uh, rather than being complacent. So that's been really cool to see and, and how all that uh, was organized. Yeah, uh, I, think with, we've, I think we finished, I'll interrupt you. I think we finished COVID, you know, kind of depends what you define it as with 180,000 members. And now we're up over 255,000 members. So, you know, a lot of game companies went backwards a little bit, um, even strong. So we've continued to grow. So really excited about it. And it, it's, um, it's really about making the product better and listening to customers. That's, that's what it's all about. Um, it's not any fancy marketing messages or anything. You, you have to make a good product and keep, and keep improving it. And that's how you grow this business. Yeah, I think it's worth noting that that growth isn't just in terms of customers and users, but the company's been growing huge, right? So 
uh, to Greg's point and your point, we've been reinvesting. Uh, there's been, you know, lots of additions to staff across the board in all different areas, things like that. So it's nice to see that. Yeah, we've, uh, yeah, we've taken that growth and we've put it right back into the product by, you know, doubling our staff in the last, you know, two or three years. So um, really, uh, it's all about talent and um, creating a culture. And uh, we've hired some really talented people in the last, you know, three or four years. And I think people are starting to see it. In fact, I don't think Rain, Rain I know Rain wouldn't have been as good without some of the new people. Um, not to discount some of the people that have been here forever. They're, we have some really smart people that have been here for so long. Um, uh, they're critical as well, but uh, it's nice to it's nice to have more bodies, uh, smart people working on the product. Well, let's let's stay on this for a second. Uh, you know, from your perspective, with everything that's happened since COVID, so you know, we go to a more remote workforce rather than than just everybody being in the office. Plus, as you said, you know, basically doubling the st- the size of the staff. You know, how do you approach the culture with all of those those uh, those changes? Like, how do you maintain that? Well, I think you really need a good, you know, you know, culture is a broad word, but, you know, a culture that um, where everyone's, you know, feeling like they're part of it and they're heard and and, uh, and they're accountable. You have to create that type of culture. But uh, um, I think it's really important to have a really good structure, um, a management structure, a leadership structure. And, um, you know, I think we have that. And I, I think, um, you know, just um, creating a culture where people want to come to work every day and want to make the product better. Um, I, you know, just the you know, we have a very passionate group, and we really encourage that. And I think it's just infectious. Um, you know, we have a lot of uh, you know type A's that are just so passionate about this. I think it's infectious, and it, it really creates this great culture. Um, we try to support that with really strong communication, and uh, but it is difficult. You know, we're you know so many people. I think we have employees in about eight different countries now. And, um, you know, in, in about 30 states. So it is difficult to uh, you know, sort of keep in, keep in communication. But we, we, have, we have a lot of meetings, um, but they're efficient meetings. We do a lot, on, a lot online. And, uh, and um, so it's, it's, uh, it's been a challenge, but I think it's, it's worked out really well for us. It's also been a nice, uh, nice tempo change in the last, I guess, probably year. You know, anybody in the area going in on Thursdays. And so we go into the office once a week. And uh, actually get to see people, and sometimes I feel like you don't get as maybe as much done off your regular checklist. But the collaboration, at least to uh, the the discussions that happen around the cafeteria or just walking over to somebody and, and chatting about it, that's uh, that helps a lot too. And we're finding a little bit of that balance where uh, you do get that in person collaboration. So that's been really nice. Um, let's pivot yeah. over. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, yeah, the collaboration is really important and, and that's how we work. And, you know, but uh, you got to be careful of committees too, you know, because uh, the old thing is nobody ever built a statue of a committee. Um, so <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, you, you need some, uh, you know, there, the, you got to get feedback from everybody, but then you have to, you know, make a decision and there has to be a leader. And, uh, you know, you can't, sometimes when you start bartering, um, you start negotiating what should be done, then you end up with something less. So, you know, it, you know, you have to watch out for that too. Collaboration is great, but at the end of the day, you have to empower certain people to, um, you know, to make good good decisions. And I think we have a lot of those good people in place. Sorry to interrupt. No, all good. So let's uh, let's pivot a little bit. We're going to go over and we're going to talk about you know one of the the big acquisitions was uh, bringing Monster Games uh, on with iRacing and, and merging those two uh, two studios really uh, together under the iRacing brand. And now with with the announcement of the NASCAR Twenty Five project for consoles, uh, obviously is big news with uh, within the sim racing community. A lot of excitement of iRacing getting back to its roots. Uh, Let's talk about you know how did this come about because this was a long time in the works. Yeah, I could probably talk for an hour about it, but you know, <laughs> iRacing iRacing's had a a license with NASCAR um, for I don't know fifteen years, Kevin. I, yeah, I about can't fifteen remember. years. Yeah, yeah, I would guess. But uh, we're on our our fourth renewal of the license with them, and um, our license is exclusive for for uh, for what we first simulated racing game on PC. And we never took an interest uh, in the console base because we didn't really have the capacity to build console games. So um, 
but it was always in the back of our mind. We always wish we could, um, but we, you know, we didn't want to restrict the license because it was important to NASCAR to obviously have console games and the license is expensive, but it was always in the back of our mind. So, you know, we, we were starting to talk about possibly um, creating, uh, building up our own console shop. But when the, um, you know, when the MGI uh, studio became available, um, we, we, we jumped on that. Uh, it's a great studio. They've built NASCAR games. And um, while that was going on, we always kept in touch with with NASCAR and motorsport games saying, hey, we would we would like to get, you know, possibly a carve out or or get the license. And um, just we kept talking to them over the years. And, you know, finally, with motorsport games, um, it became available. Um, NASCAR felt we were the, and, and the teams, the, the RTA felt we were the right partner. So it all just worked out in the end. And um, but it, it it was years of discussion. It was really the dream, uh, our dream uh, license to get um, for a console product. So we're just really thrilled it came together. And uh, you know it was quite a bit of negotiation. You know with all these different parties involved, more sport games, NASCAR, and all the teams or all different entities that we had to figure this all out with. So it, it took a while, but it, it all worked out in the end, and we're really excited about it. Let's uh. Let's talk about the development structure there. You know, so many people have so many questions about, you know, what we're going to do. There's such a responsibility to the community to to really bring a quality product uh, to the console space for NASCAR. You know, what? how are you guys going about, you know, the development structure uh, for uh, getting that product launched? Well, the, the uh, Monster Games group um, that we acquired uh, – at the end of 2022, um, uh, they're a great group and a really good core group uh, based out of Minnesota. Um, and what we've done is we've really added a lot of talent to that, just like iRacing. We've added a lot of talent to that group. But the important it was important really for i you know the the iRacing brings a lot to the table too, and so we've been able to um, work with them. Uh, integrate a lot of things with them, and so they're at, they're using a lot of our assets, a lot of our technology. In fact, they're using they're going to be using all of our tracks and cars inside that game, just like the World of Outlaws game. Um, they've created an integration, so when we they can easily pull tracks and cars over from the iRacing um, from the iRacing platform. So from from an art model perspective, their physics is. Uh, is on a different architecture, but um, we're using a lot of the iRacing. A vehicle dynamics group and whatnot um, to just like we did with the World of Outlaws game to help them out. You know, we're even we're, they're even borrowing a couple of our engineers um, for 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 months to do certain things. So um, it's really a, a, a team effort. But the the MGI game group is is really good at building NASCAR games, and they um, they're very creative. And uh, so we're we're really letting them drive the ship here, but we're just supporting them any way we can to make the best game we the best nascar game that's ever built so it's uh it's a team effort but uh um i like the fact that we have these synergies these technical synergies that we can uh, share back and forth so that's really important it saves a lot of time and it makes a better game yeah and i'm sure as we get closer to the the launch of nascar 25 we'll talk more about it and maybe we have an entire episode where we just you know talk about the development process of that but let's stay on licenses for a second and let's pivot over to indycar uh this was another one that was uh highly contentious in the community how that whole situation went down uh over the past couple of years and now uh, it's uh, come full circle we've got indycar officially licensed back on iRacing. uh we're going to bring back the indy 500 this year we're incredibly excited about that i was talking with uh, drew adamson one of our our our, our producer uh, for our, all of our broadcasts yesterday, making some plans on that. But Tony, one, can you talk to me about, uh, you know, what, what a lot of people don't know about the IndyCar discussion is the dialogue stayed open the entire time. Um, but yeah, can we talk about that a little bit? Yeah, just like the NASCAR situation, uh, Motorsport Games um, secured an exclusive with IndyCar. And so our license expired in, at the end of 2022. So uh, we literally lost our license. Um, um, and I think, you know, I, th I think IndyCar, if they had their druthers would have rather kept iRacing in the fold, but you know, they, they made that decision and they were, and somebody was going to do a dedicated IndyCar game for them. And, and they, 
to do that, they required an exclusive. So I get why IndyCar made that decision. And um, I think Motorsport Games just bit off more than they could chew. Um, they, they just started gobbling up all these exclusive licenses, and they didn't have the capacity to build all these games. So, um, and so that, that's how we ended up getting the NASCAR game back, and 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 the IndyCar game for that matter. But we kept in touch the whole time, all through 2023. Um, try, you know, trying to work this out. Um, you know, Motorsport Games was honestly. Um, we talked to them a lot and they were, they were good to talk to. And I, I think they, they got it that the community wanted to see IndyCar on iRacing. So um, anyway, it, it ended up that they, that they never got that game out and they ended up losing that license. So we were able to, you know, within a matter of, you know, days, once that happens, you know, snag that license back um, to start, you know, this year, 2000. So we lost the license for 2023 and we got it back for 2024. So, you know, I think the good news is that, uh, um, we grew an appreciation, a better appreciation for one another, IndyCar and I racing. And, uh, you know, I, I think we're stronger partners than we've ever been with them. And we have some more news coming about other things we're doing with them. So, um, you know, I, I think that's the good news is the partnership became stronger, um, because of, because of the, the minor controversy that, that occurred. Well, and that's that's the, the the big word, uh, in this whole scenario is partnerships. And I think what, what a lot of these, uh, these uh, race organizers have, have started to understand is a partnership rather than a, it's not just iRacing racing as a, a vendor like if working together we are a great opportunity to engage their fan base and an engaged fan base is a fan base that stays around and whether it's through you know nascar indycar imsa has been a, a big tell you know we've seen the direct correlations that they've noted between the uh you know how many people are engaging and watching and, and going to their races especially the daytona 24 is a great example uh the partnership aspect is incredibly important you know that's and that's something that uh it's it's pretty cool to be a part of and really proud to be a part yeah, of the, is growing the fia that. the fia that you work with yeah you know it's just it's really important to us and you know we do look at it as a partnership um with and you know we're trying to we're trying to always find more partners and 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 uh, um, become closer with our partners because it's you know we we really believe that we're part of racing with a with a with a virtual arm of racing so um, um, of of the real world so you know it's important to us. All right, let's uh, let's move along a little bit and let's talk actually moving forward. So you know obviously as we've said things are going well right now. But we, we are not resting on our laurels. And if anything, we're doubling down. And when you're looking ahead uh, to the future, you know, what, what pops in is, is the, the, num- the things that, that you think are, from your perspective, are the things that are important that we are, are, are beginning to look at and, and, and pursue further? Well, I think we always want to, you know, we have, we have engineers that focused on certain things. Um, they have a certain skill set and they know certain piece, parts of the code base the best, but, you know, we always want to improve everything to do with iRacing, but, um, you know, we, we want to certainly keep making our physics and the driving better. You know, that that's important. Um, you can always improve. Um, so we are adding, uh, more resources to that. Um, you know, for example, we're going to be working on uh, phase two of the NASCAR, um, you know, the NASCAR update, I guess we call it. We, we released phase one of that. Now we're releasing phase two. But overall, we want to keep making the tires and the physics better, keep improving things. Um, graphics is a huge area of, of, uh, of, of focus. Um, that's definitely an opportunity to improve. Um, we're looking at uh, building a whole new, pl- um, you know, graphics engine. Uh, we haven't uh, um, quite decide exactly what we're going to do, but, you know, we want, we need a new renderer and a new, a, a, new, a graphics update. And, uh, we want to, I think that's an opportunity to improve. Um, and then new features, um, you know, career mode is something we certainly want to, uh, we're, we're working on now and we're really excited about the single, I think the single player stuff and I racing could be much better. Um, the onboarding, um, different, uh, different, uh, um, ways to get, to get, involved in iRacing, whether that's a, you know, an interactive racing school, um, get, getting people more comfortable on track. We have a lot of ideas around that, um, you know, inclu- in, including, you know, even a, a driving coach with AI or, uh, and a crew chief. So we want to get, there's a lot of ways we can get people more comfortable on the track and to, you know, racing's hard to be out there on the track by yourself. It, it, it'd be good to get feedback 
just like you do in the real world with a with a crew chief, crew chief and a driving coach. So there's a lot of things like that we have planned. But overall, we want to just keep, keep improving everything. You know, the net code, the the performance, the um, you know, frame rates, graphics. You know, we're just gonna. You know, we have a, a lot of ideas around new features. Um, so. You know, just uh, up and down the board, we just got to keep working hard to get better. There's a lot. There's still so much opportunity to improve. Yep, and we are uh, we're pushing in a lot of areas. Last thing I want to talk about. This isn't on the outline, but it's something that obviously is top of mind for us. We also have a, a new title with another studio that we've acquired with the Arantes, but with Exocross uh, coming out uh, pretty soon, right? Yeah. So that's. Um... Uh, you know, we have the we have the MGI studio that I talked about, which which right now has the World of Outlaws franchise and, and is working on the NASCAR game. But we have this other studio um, that we acquired at about the same time, um, the Arante Studio, and they were they've been work they had a game called Drag an early release on Steam, and um, it was it wasn't finished, and so we've been working on um, taking that game to a new level, finishing up that game. We've added a ton to it, uh, other driving uh, opportunities for people. Um, we added AI um, and, you know, a lot more content, a whole new, you know, more tracks and, and whatnot, um, and, and kept working on the features. So um, we're really excited. The game drives incredible, um, and we're scheduled to have a re- – we're scheduled to release that this summer, so we're really excited about it. So we're in our final, final stages of development about the – Submit it to Microsoft and Sony to get a, for approval, and we're going to release that this summer. So we're really excited about it. Um, it it's an off-road driving game. Um, it kind of has a futuristic appeal to it, and uh, and it, it's it's more toward, toward the rally game, but it's uh, it's it's super fun, and uh, so it's it's different than anything we do on iRacing. So um, it should appeal to a, an audience. But if you if you really enjoy good driving games. Um, you're going to like this game, and it's it's really fun. Yeah, it's a ton of fun. Uh, I know Chris Leone, who will be uh, joining us for the rest of the podcast, has uh, had his uh, had a, a lot of uh, input and opinions on the storyline of that, and it's, uh, he's pretty excited. I don't, uh, anybody that watched the podcast, anything on Derek, Chris loves. So I think people yeah, are going to really the, enjoy it. And the graphics are amazing. I mean, it has an unbelievable graphics engine. It's one of the, it's one of the things that, that attracted us to the studio. So it's, it's really, really cool. It's really fun. It's really uh, visually, it's it's awesome. So we're really excited about it. All right. Well, thanks for taking the time with us today, Tony. I know we got a busy day ahead of us, but uh, yeah, thanks for carving out some time for us. And uh, on that note, uh, let's get back to the show. Thanks. Thanks for having me. All right, we're back. That was a ton of fun. I always like sitting down with Tony. You never know. What's going to come up in those discussions? Uh, they're definitely free form, but uh, yeah, Tony knows his stuff. I will say that. He is uh, definitely has his finger on the pulse of the, the culture here at iRacing and everything going on. And it's uh, really cool to get his insight and see kind of what his vision is from the top, you know, looking at oh, overviewing everything. You know, I think it's very easy in any job. You know, everybody sees their, their little sphere. And I think Tony has a really good perspective. Tony's spear is the entire ecosystem Everything. of iRacing. His spear and is bigger some. than most people's. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's really cool to see that global perspective and uh, how each little cog works together on it. So, moving on, let's talk about East Esports, E NASCAR, Coca Cola, iRacing series, uh, Chris. <laughs> oh yeah, no the um, so the Coke series has been hitting it hard these past uh, few weeks, these first few rounds of the season. Uh, we've got a nice new format this year where we've got three segments of the regular season where these little four to five race chunks, uh, the top point scorer in each of these chunks not only earns a nice little cash bonus, but also some playoff points towards the end too. So there's a lot of value in getting it right in any given couple month span uh right now colin keister is your points leader and this and the uh season wraps or i'm sorry the segment wraps up um march 26th at richmond with the uh, fourth round of the season um but that last race at atlanta talk about an intense finish malik ray one of the drivers who has been in the series for years and years and years and everybody was you know, waiting for Malik to take that first victory on a super speedway type track because there is nobody better 
on a super speedway, the Malik Ray, and it finally came together at Atlanta. And uh, I'm sure Spyro Motorsports is pretty happy about their couple of signings between him and uh, Casey Kerwin, the former series champion. But uh, Malik had one hell of a celebration coming across the finish line. That's probably one of the most viral eNASCAR moments that we've had in a while. So Malik's got the momentum. He's one of the uh, top drivers right now in the standings, got some of the uh, best positioning towards the playoffs. But right now, Colin Keister is your favorite to take home that segment bonus. And uh, Tuesday nights at 8 p.m., enascar.com slash live. We'll see if Colin can hold on to that points lead at Richmond or if Somebody else can knock him off to take those playoff points in the bonus. Excellent stuff. And we also have Porsche Tag Hoyer, Esports Super Cup, Kevin. Uh, yeah, a lot going on there. And, and Sebastian Job is hot. Yeah, yeah. The series is uh, starting to get to the end of it, right? So we we just had, we got, uh, what, two more rounds, three more rounds? Uh, two more rounds, I think. Um, so, but yeah, so that's, Sebastian Job's been... Uh, and the man to beat for sure, um, but it's not wrapped up yet. So uh, Diego Pinto uh, certainly got a shot. I think he's thirty something points behind with uh, more than I think it's eighty five points on offer on a standard week. The final race, I think there's an extra twenty points or so because there's double points in, in the uh, the shorter race. So a lot on the line still. Been some great racing. Round four, we introduced a, a tournament format, which was new this year, and I think. Uh, it was probably the most exciting broadcast we had. It had heat races, you know, I think it was like five or six cars in each one. Uh, really made it exciting. Three laps at, at uh, Watkins Glen. There was a lot of action. Yeah, <laughs> People had to make moves. Uh, I think it worked out really well. The whole idea was to, you know, how, how do we make this, you know, a little bit more interesting in, in the middle of the season? I think we accomplished that. Hopefully the drivers enjoyed it as well. I know I did watching it, so that was super cool. Um, but yeah, a couple more races. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, uh, it's you know, roughly every other Saturday in the afternoon here in the U.S. I think it's 17 GMT, but I'd have to double check it. Um, you can check out iRacing.com slash PESC uh, for the actual times. Um, but yeah, season will be wrapping up maybe before we do another one of these. I don't know, but but it's been a great season and uh, looking forward to watching the final couple races. No, it's going to be a good time. These are some of the most exciting road races you can see in, in all of us. To see them live, check out the, the uh, you can watch them on demand on YouTube. It's a, uh, yeah, really good racing. Excited to see how it finishes up. Yeah, if you, if you hadn't watched any and you want to watch one replay, go to the tournament one. That's the most exciting one. So uh, round four at Watkins Glen. And on that note, that has been this episode of the iRacing Downshift. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and anywhere else Chris has put this thing. For Chris Leone and Kevin Bobbitt, I am Greg West, and we'll see you on the track with Rain Boots and an umbrella.